G'day guys, my name's Josh, you can call me Ja Woodle, and welcome back to 7 Days to Die Alpha 17, where I am back after a rather long time in Ja Woodle Park, the old testing ground that has served me so well through the days, through the episodes, through the builds, through the racetracks, I love that racetrack so much, every time I come back to Ja Woodle Park, I have to have a crack at the racetrack, and to see if I can still drive it as well as when I built it, but I'm not here for the racetrack. I am back in Jaludal Park because I am for once and for all going to show you guys from start to finish how to build the, the killing corridor that I use in a lot of my playthroughs. It's my go-to base design because for Alpha 17, it works like a treat. It does not work in Alpha 16 or 15. Also, if you're playing on console or playing one of the older Alpha builds, this isn't gonna, gonna work for you. This only works with the new pathfinding that I've spent so long experimenting with and figuring out. Uh, the new pathfinding Alpha 17, this is my go-to every single time. And a lot of people always have uh, trouble with it in the comments and ask me, hey, why doesn't work for me what am i doing wrong and there's so many just simple like uh misses that people are making that is ruining the design form you have to build it right and you have to build it properly uh for it to work out so i was like rather than answer every reply with like uh, uh, trying to explain it to him in text i was like fuck it i'm just gonna build one in shibuta park and show how it works why it works and what not to do what to do to get it all to work god but shibuta park is dying Jewel Park is dying very, very slow. Like, every time I load this world, another chunk gets replaced and, like, uh, re reset back to what it was originally. Like, my garage is gone. There's a chunk missing over there out of Jewel Farms. There's a chunk missing out of the MMA cage over here, if I can get around to actually show you guys what it looks like. Things, <laughs> things are getting taken out all the time. Thankfully, my biggest and best base ever is still all in one piece. You'd be pretty upset if you lost anything out of that. It needs to be as big as it can be. If you start losing inches or meters or whatever out of that, then you're going to have a bad time. The zombies won't want to have anything to do with it if it's not as big as it could possibly be. So given how close Shibuta Park is to actually dying and never letting me load it up again, uh, why wouldn't I build some more things in it? Of course that's the right thing to do. It's like on the brink of death. It's on life support and I'm trying to plug in my phone charger where, where the machine's plugged in. Uh, yeah, all around here should be fine. I'll quickly just like empty all this ground, get my grass cutter back out. I don't have a grass cutter anymore. Do I have the scythe? Scythe? I do have the scythe. Thank God for that. <laughs> the scythe is basically just a grass cutter, but not actually called a grass cutter. So because I'm a nice guy, or because I like to pretend I am anyway, I'm going to build three different killing corridors because I need to show, well, if I feel like I need to show the difference between different materials. So I'll build one out of wood, I'll build one out of cobble, and I'll build one out of concrete, where like my concrete is what I normally build it out of, to kind of show you guys why some materials work better than others. With the 17.2 update with the new, uh, the new, what? Well, the new pathing that they do, like the calculations they do about how to get to you and what the best option is going to be for them. Uh, sometimes the weaker materials don't work, whereas a stronger material wood. I need some stairs. Uh, I need to actually search for it. So I'm going to go and make the first one out of wood, show you what happens with it, and then uh, move up in the world to stronger, stronger materials until we find one, like the bare minimum you need to get it to work. The design itself is actually pretty simple. You, you I don't want to build it any higher than about six tall. How big is this? One, two, three, four, uh, five, six. You don't want to go kind of six tall because anything taller than that, the zombies just kind of won't want a path to it. At least I haven't really had much success with it. Even like seven tall just seems to be too much to ask of them. So you have your own little platform over here. This is where you stand. This is the safety portion. And then a long way away, like over here, say, we'll build another tower just like there. Does that line up? That's on the outside of it. So I want to go in here, build that to be the same height. And then this is where they come through. You've got to have two different supports. You've got to have a support on the both sides. If you don't do that, you're going to have a bad time and a big pile of splinters that you're in the middle of while you're trying to fight off the zombies that made said splinters. And you're going to build this all the way out to just about connect with this one over here. You don't want to build it too far. You don't want to like close off the gap too much. I normally try and have a four block gap between the two. That's kind of a minimum. Uh, pay attention to your structural integrities and stuff as well. Um, how far is that? Let's say one, two, three, four. That's about four there. That looks about right. So then on this side, this is the actual killing corridor part. So you build this out. The longer this is, the, the better it's going to be. The more time you're going to have to actually kill the zombies. If you go too long, then they're going to get distracted and not actually use it. So about about 10 to 12. I've gone 13 before in the past. I think uh, GFM8 mode has a 13 long corridor. 
Uh, so you, you don't want to go much further than that or else they're going to get disinterested and beat down the pillars instead. However, with the wood one, I think that's kind of what's going to happen anyway. Yep, there you go. Pay attention to your structural integrity. I said it, I didn't do it. We have the actual platforms built, so like the main kind of like skeleton of the killing corridor. But now we need to build the actual important part. You know, all of this stuff is just accessories. You can do this however you want. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but the only important part is the, the hatch drawbridge in the middle. Now, the hatch drawbridge confuses a lot of people. This is where everyone seems to have troubles with it. The hatches on top don't matter that is just a walkway for the player to get across so please pay attention to this because this is the the trouble area what you want to do you uh for wood the best one to use is uh wedge tips you can't use one eighth blocks in wood that's uh i mean i can't even spawn them in if i go wood one eighth there's just not an option for it and when you start going up to concrete and cobblestone and stuff like that then you can start using the one eighth oh uh yeah steel so you can only use it in wet concrete stainless steel or normal concrete and regular steel you can't uh actually make it in any any other material i prefer the one eighth blocks i feel like the gaps are bigger and it's more reliable than some of the other things but wood wedge chips are what you want to do if you're building it out of wood and you want to go like this on both sides you want to get it so that the thicker part is down the bottom and then on each side the easiest way to do this is to hold r go copy rotation like that and then face the other way and put it onto there that's the easiest way to get the proper rotation uh for the wedge tips and like that again so that is actually the main crux of this design the hatches on top don't matter they're just they're just to make it easier for you to get across this is what is actually fooling the zombies for example if i go over here and i spawn in a bunch of arlene's i know i've broken up with arlene she's cheated on me too many times but she's tested every other design for the sake of you know symmetricality making everything the same we have to use arlene again so i spawn a bunch of arlene's over there they're gonna get angry at me and what straight down the gap down, except for this one who apparently landed on someone's head. I'm going to drop down there and run back and start the loop all over again. So this is the mechanism of the killing corridor. Now, I mean, sometimes you do have a lot of problems where, uh, so I don't really use wood for this, where kind of Arlene gets, gets distracted and decides, you know what, I'm not going to keep running this circuit. I'm going to go and start beating on the pylons underneath. So if you're going to reinforce this, you need to reinforce your pylon here here and most importantly or actually most importantly equally as importantly the stairs over here this is the weak point this is where i mean if they get caught she almost got caught there sometimes they get caught on like the edge right here and start beating on your stairs but you see so you need to you need to counter that but this is this is how it works this is all there is so if i stop arlene in her tracks turn off her ai and then go through and place down some hatches all we're going to get is just a way for me to get in and out it's not going to affect the pathfinding at all this isn't the trick this is just to make my life a little bit easier i'll finish this off like that and like that and like that there we go okay so open these up and you'll notice that as soon as i start the ai again nothing will change in the way that arlene acts everything will be exactly as it was before except that now when i want to get out i can close the hatches and walk over the gaps and save myself having to try and jump so turn on her ai again oh there they're getting caught in the stairs we're going to reinforce the stairs and she will fall straight back down easy as that so the hatches just to reiterate for like the hundredth time the hatches oh 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 she was coming for the pylon she wanted it she decided to fuck my shit up but she changed her mind at the last second yeah the hatches do nothing for the zombies don't just put hatches down without the blocks underneath the blocks underneath are the most important part they are the whole reason this design works at all so those of you who watch the series that i do you'll recognize this as the base that i built for gfm8 mode the first horde base i built in impossible mode was this it was a little bit shorter to the ground which led to a lot of problems where i was close enough to the ground that the zombies thought it was a viable option to try and get through me through here rather than the the longer route and they ended up beating through this pillar and ruining everything so if you're going to build this out of wood build it at least six tall you got to make it tall you got to make it up there because otherwise it's going to be a bad time and they're going to destroy it whether you like it or not so that is how you build it out of wood but i don't particularly build it out of wood most of the time normally i'm building it out of concrete in fact while i'm here i'll quickly just grab the concrete 18 blocks and i'll go concrete and i'll grab a bunch of these blocks so i'll build another one out of concrete and show you how i actually build it together with like the barbed wire shoot and all that kind of stuff all the things that go into making it a really good really viable really like kind of foolproof horde based design 
So you can see I've built these two exactly the same, just one's out of wood and one's out of concrete. But normally when I do build things out of concrete, this is when I start putting effort into aesthetics. Because I've, I've, I've always said, since like the very first builds I did for Seven Days to Die, is that aesthetics matter. If you want it to, I mean, just because it's the apocalypse doesn't mean you can't have like nice looking bases. You've got to make things look nice so that if you, if you bring home an Arlene before she turns into a zombie, she's impressed with your sweet crafting skills and not just with, you know, your angular designs, all that kind of stuff. You know, you can't be lazy. You gotta make sure things look good when you're fending for your life. So, that is the concrete platforms for the killing corridor. But instead of using the wedge tips like I used over here, you can use the wedge tips, but you'll notice, I mean, uh, this is another problem with the wood. They get broken up very, very quickly. They will take swings as they fall. So you need to make sure you have as, uh, if you're gonna uh, reinforce any point, if you only have the option to reinforce one point in this whole design, reinforce here. Because as soon as one of these breaks, you lose. As soon as that path is broken, it's game over. They're gonna break down the pillar underneath and you're going to die. So but if you're not using the wedge tips and using 1 8 blocks like I do, then you want to get as much of a gap between the blocks as possible. So I'll normally go, uh, I'll go uh, on face and I'll put it up in the corners like that and like that and on the other side as well through, no, that was the wrong one. Thank God I've got my insta break uh, uh, super digger. Right, so like that, and we're going to go copy rotation, turn around again, just like we did with the wedge tips, and put that like there, and we're going to, uh, can I just rotate that around, please? Damn it, I could have if I didn't overclick. But yeah, you've got to use uh, the different rotation options to your advantage, because otherwise you're going to be here for a long, long time. And like that, please. No, I'm in the wrong spot. I lost track of where I was, and there. So there you go. That is the layout. I use for the 1 blocks. It's not super complicated, it's pretty straightforward, but you can see that the gaps that the zombies can fall down are much, much bigger, including if they come down the center. They often don't, but if they do kind of bunch up and one gets pushed into the middle, you're not running the risk of them kind of, like, you know, there's an even chance of them getting across over here, there's a lesser chance over this side. And then on top of that, we just go the iron hatches. Now, I always place these wrong, I place it wrong again. <laughs> Every time I place these things wrong, it drives me up the freaking wall. Is that better? Damn it, it's on the wrong side. There you go. So you can see exactly the same as it was before. The hatches are up, which means the zombies will fall down. Once again, it is the 1 8 blocks underneath that is the important part of this. Actually, like the wedge tips were over there, the hatches are just for you. But you might notice, like you might have noticed before even, when Arlene was rolling around, that you don't actually have a whole lot of time to do damage. So when she's cruising through, you're over here, you've got a bunch of zombies to kind of focus on. By the time she pops up to when she falls down, is not a lot of time to try and get a bunch of damage done. It's way, way too quick. So the way that you counter that is you build the actual killing corridor. This is like the hatch drawer bridge and stuff like that. Now, I've got a bunch of names, a bunch of different components that go into this, but the actual killing corridor comes over this side. And you want to, uh, just for aesthetic reasons, you want to get some ramps and put them all the way up the side here, because you have to build a wall on either side. Now, if you're looking at this and thinking this looks awfully familiar, you are correct because, as I said before, this is my go-to design. I've built this in almost every one of my ongoing series because it just works so goddamn well. And I also do, it's all important to note that I leave the top open for future Molotov use. You don't want to make it an actual tunnel, uh, even though that seems like a good idea because you want to make, leave your options open for later. If you close it all up, you're going to have to destroy stuff to use different kinds of weapons. And that's just really not a great idea. So normally, I go in and I put in two layers of barbed wire. It's all down to preference. I normally put two so that like when dogs and stuff come through, if someone's climbing over another zombie, then they will uh, hit the second row of barbed wire and slow down. Now it is important to note here that you put the barbed wire flat against the wall. You don't make it horizontal so the zombies have to walk through it because then the, uh, the barbed wire takes damage and you have to go and do repairs. Ow, I just walked into it, like, like that. So I'll get done damage to the barbed wire so that would cost resources to fix up and they also will break over time. But if you put it against the wall like that, you can see you still get the slowdown effect without actually doing any damage to the barbed wire. So you get all the benefits of barbed wire without the cost of barbed wire which is very, very handy. So that's what I normally do on both sides, all the way up and down. But given that I'm building a brand new one here and I'm in creative and I've got time to kind of experiment, there's one thing that I wanted to try out so we can learn something new together. And that is using a concrete pole, if I can get it to sit the right way, like that, and putting that across there 
like that. Now, this was suggested to me in some of the comments saying that I should do this because it's still getting the barbed wire effect given that like, the, the barbed wire affects the block where things' feet is. So, like, if you put it up here, you're not going to get any effect. If you put it down where their feet are, then uh, the seven days calculates from where the block that they're walking on. So, it thinks it's a barbed wire block, it slows them down, and then you get all the goodness out of that. But I want to know if I can put that up there uh, on both sides, if that's going to give me the same effect. Because hopefully, this, you can, I mean, what, uh, uh, yeah, you can see I'm getting pushed away from the pole, so I can't actually touch the barbed wire, which means I should never, ever, ever, unless I get some dogs, have to actually do any barbed wire repairs, which would be lovely dovely. With that built, I guess it's time to test it out with a bunch of zombies. Let's give Arlene some friends. Let's give a whole bunch more Arlene's. And you know what? Because they're always together, let's put in some cat. No, it's, uh, what is it? It's like old, old timer, I think it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, look, she, she likes the old crusty boys. That's for sure. Oh, she's uh, the old, old gold digger, Arlene. All right, they're all down there having their lovely couple time. They've seen me. I've seen them. They're nervous about it. So let's get their attention and see if they will all come up and do what I need them to do. Will they follow the path? Will these poles block their way? I don't know. It doesn't seem to so far. Yes, that's lovely. Everyone's coming in. They're beating on the stairs, though. That's what I was talking about. You've got to, if you've got to uh, be upgrading stuff and reinforcing stuff, you know, I'll just murder a couple of these. You've got to reinforce those stairs. Look, the stairs are almost done in no time. There's that, that is the weak point. Second stair up, that's where you've got to reinforce. But they're all falling through. They're all making it through there nice and easily. So, yeah. I would, I guess I do recommend putting in the poles. This is all down to personal preference though. This is the mechanics that makes it work. I just wanted to show you guys how I build and what I think about when I build this thing. So you can go in here and you can like do what you want to do and make it your own kind of base. Personalize it. Do what, th what makes you happy. Make it your own. But you can see now just how much longer you've got to actually do damage, shoot the bow, you know, take out as much damage as you can. You've got time to kill them as much as you can. Uh, I need this pole's taking damage. They're taking some swings down the end here. No, I think we're okay. Well, yeah, maybe I'll start using some poles then. That seems, I mean, for the cost of some more concrete, I don't have to worry about repairing barbed wire, and I like that. I've been talking about what to upgrade, but I haven't actually shown you, but given that I'm giving, like, a full instructional on how this all works, I probably should. So you want to upgrade... God, the nail gun's so slow now. It used to be so much better. You want to upgrade the stairs. Mostly all the stairs. This, anything that's touched in the ground and is within arm's reach of zombies, upgrade. It's pretty, it, that's the easy way to do it. If you're unsure, upgrade it. The last thing you want is them to beat down one of the pylons and the whole thing collapses because you skimped down on a couple of concrete. It's 10 concrete per, uh, per upgrade. It's really not that expensive. So you want to upgrade all of this if you can, if you've got the resources. But if you have to be picky and you really want to make sure you're getting the most important parts done, you want to upgrade the pylon that you stand on. Make sure it's hard uh, for them to beat that down just in case. And you also want to upgrade these ones under here. You can see they've been taking a beating as well. So upgrade all of the 1-8 blocks or the uh, the wedge tips, whichever one you decide to be using, whichever one your, your preference dictates. Upgrade all of them. The ones in the middle first, the ones on the outside last. Ones in the middle are the ones that get hit more often than not. So those are the ones, the bare minimum, I guess, that you want to upgrade. Uh, this is what you should be striving for. After that, it's all down to personal preference. But with all those upgraded and built, there is one more thing to show. I mean, this episode might be running a little bit long as it is already, but I, I just want to kind of hedge all my bets, make sure that everyone has all the information they need so that if they do want to ask any questions, they've got all the information there ready to go. I can just link them to this video and they can get whatever they need. Sooner rather than later, you are going to need some protection from like cops and vultures and things like that. So it's a good idea to build a nice little protective cage at the end of the uh, of the killing corridor. It'll protect you from the vomits and all sorts of things you can pass. You can still shoot through the bars, which makes it all nice and lovely. Put you down here as well, across there. The, yeah, the main thing that can get you over here, if you, if you have flying dog hordes like I've had, then this will protect you from that too. But vultures are going to sneak up on you from behind and ruin your day. So you've got to make sure you protect against those as well. If I can put this uh, bars in the right spot, like that, up onto there. You also want to put bars across the roof as... <sighs> Don't forget the roof while you're at it. Obviously very, very important. It is important to think about as well, if you're in here... I mean, I don't think you can throw Molotovs through... Can you? Uh, let's test it. Why not? We're here. Let's test it out. Can you throw Molotovs through the iron bars? I've actually tested this before because I'm usually trying to save my mollies. Uh, eh. 
No, you cannot throw Molotovs through iron bars. So do not try. You will set yourself on fire immediately. So keep that in mind. You need somewhere. I mean, I would probably build a ladder to then stand on top of here. Then when a ranged attack or a vulture or something comes in, I'll sneak back down into my little uh, killing cage down here. I mean, that's what I did for my uh, hardcore playthrough. The base I've got on there, I have two levels. I have my protected cage and I have my Molotov platform up the top. You just got to watch out for spider zombies. So you want to build some of those. You also got to want some doors because everyone needs doors in this thing just in case the zombies do get across you got to have contingency plans if things go wrong what are you going to do so you can open up like that you can go inside and then once you're in here you are safe as houses from anything that wants to attack but that's really kind of all it takes that is like the the bare bones kind of all the components that go into making a killing corridor and it works absolutely perfectly i've never had any trouble with the killing corridor other than that one time i built a wood one that was too shallow and they took out this pillar and i fell down into a swarm of zombies and that was a bad time but if you build it out of concrete and you build it like this and you have the one eighth blocks or the wedge tips or even like the half blocks depending on your preference just some sort of a mechanism to make the zombies think you've got the, the think they have the path but they'll fall through if you're curious about what blocks will and won't do that there's a whole series i made on pathfinding and what blocks will trick them and what won't so that is how you make the killing corridor so if you have any questions refer to this video but if you, I can absolutely ask the questions in the comments because i will i do read all the comments clearly that's why i built this thing to answer all those questions but if there's a little like things i've forgotten or you're not sure about something watch this whole video first then ask me the question and then i will answer it as best i can but yeah there you go that is the killing corridor horde base i think i i mean i am empirically gonna state that that is the best horde base for alpha 17 bar none i have built a lot of bases for alpha 17 different designs different ideas different things but this is the one that i use when i play seven days to die i think this is the greatest seven days to die horde base you could possibly make plus it gives you all the xp you're not losing anything you're not wasting anything on traps it's relatively cheap given that i mean well depending on what the blocks you use like the materials to build the actual walls and pillars and stuff out of you can build this on the cheap especially if you build like the, the lower couple of layers out of concrete for example and then the top layers out of wood however you want to do it but if you want to take this idea run with it and personalize it make it your own absolutely do that tweet me photos if you do i love seeing when you guys go out and build these bases in your own worlds so please absolutely do that but i'll have to come back and build some more cool things in seven days to die in another episode because this episode is done so thank you guys for watching most of all thank you to all the patrons on patreon who made this episode possible if you got a lot to make sure the like button down below and subscribe to this channel follow me on twitter if i don't talk to you there first i'll see you in the next episode have a good one